Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanders channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 patch 1.9 version 2.0, the brand new patch for BFME 2, we are gonna be on the beautiful map for Horizon 2 by the way, and if you enjoy the content on this channel guys, please don't forget to leave a like on these videos, likes are helping out a lot, and subscribe for more content like this in the future. You can also check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards, the link for that is gonna be in the description down below. And in the next couple of weeks, we might host a 1v1 or a 2v2 tournament for the new patch. So stay tuned and let's get the game started. Here we go, boys. Alright guys, so we are on the beautiful map for Horizon 2 and here we have the blue elven player in Tauron against the red man of the west player, King Mustafa. Starting with a farm into the second farm. On the other side, we have two Malon trees coming up for the elven player in Tauron, who is also known as Sauron, by the way. Powerpoint wise, uh, no one is picking anything just yet. Man of the West player can go for the human wood in order to reveal the enemy's shroud or the faction of the Elven player because he doesn't know that he's facing against the Elven faction. Okay, so let's see what's gonna be the start of the Man of the West player King Mustafa and what is going to be the start from the Elven player Sauron. He's gonna move with the builder to, the, to build the second or the third Malon tree actually, guys. And the second builder from the Elven player is building up the Malon tree number 4. Alright, so economical start. On the other side we see two farms into the barracks from the Man of the West player. And his second builder is building up another farm. Beautiful. So nothing is chosen just yet by the way from the PowerPoint spell menu. Spell book. <laughs> spell menu, that sounds so wrong. And we might see some soldiers early on into the tower guards. Remember in BFME 2 in compared to Rise of the Witch King we have less units for every single faction and on top of that we have also one less faction which means the Engma faction is missing in this one. But I'm actually excited about the new changes. I don't have too much knowledge just yet about, uh, about the balance changes so we're gonna, we're gonna learn as we are casting the games guys together. You know what I'm saying right? Okay we're gonna have soldiers first they cost 200 each here. Command point wise they cost 60 each. The same also goes to the tower guards, they are more expensive obviously. And look at this, tower guards gain plus 5% speed at level 3, at level 5 and at level 7. So you can actually have 15% more movement speed with the tower guards once they are level 7. And nothing is set for the soldiers though. Okay, so we have double, uh, no, we have a barracks and a stable coming up for the Elven player in Tauron. But his units are gonna be delayed on the field and I think the soldiers, they should be able to deal decent amount of damage. Uh, the Man of the West player is starting with the Rallying Call. Rallying Call is different. Um, it's, not, it's not gonna give you armor unlike in Rise of the Witch King. Only damage, but also combat experience. On the other side, Sauron is not picking anything just yet so far. We have one more Soldier Battalion joining the battlefield. And the Lancers, they are gonna make it out very very soon. And they should be able to deal with these Soldiers, no big deal. That's gonna force Mustafa, if nothing else, to get some Tower Guards on the field as a counter unit to the Revendal Lancers. And you can also see here in Rise of the Witch King you can also recruit with the level 2 stable the Linden Horse Archer Battalion, that's not being the case in Battle for Middle Earth 2. Rallying Call is gonna be used defensively, I think to one shot those soldiers. One Trample, a nice move here from Mustafa switching to the old ground stance to minimize the damage income, but he should still not be able to touch or to deal the damage he's looking for to the second Malone tree. We have one more here, but they won't be able to take down this Malon tree as well. And even with the Rallying Call, they are dying very fast. And the reason is simple, like mentioned before, Rallying Call doesn't give you armor, so you don't get you don't get any resistance actually against those archers, guys. Okay, so we will have definitely some tower guards following up very very soon for Mustafa, who has a farm at the bottom left side very offensively. The builder uh, was not able to see this farm, and I think the lancers they won't be able to see that as well. But they might be able to see this one in the bottom side. That's gonna be also the case. Beautiful. So during all this time we have one archer from the Alvin player for defensive purposes. He has one more Lancer battalion joining the battlefield guys. Now we have some tower guards as a counter unit like mentioned before. With the porcupine formation they will even get some tankier. And that's gonna make them also you know, really tanky against uh, units like Lorien archers guys. Okay. So no transition just yet into anything but the barracks, as we will definitely need some, you know, uh, some Gondonites later on, maybe Eomir can be a solid choice to chase down those Revenant Lancers all the time. Let's see what the Man of the West player is saving for. 
And I think that's one of the changes or one of the differences what I like personally a lot. Because let's be honest, in Rise of the Witch King, creeping anything is not challenging, guys. Like, you can creep with orcs at Borknia. That's not gonna be possible in Rise of the Witch King. In, uh, in BFME 2, I mean. In BFME 2, you can't creep the Borknia with soldiers. That's not gonna be possible because they're gonna trample down your soldiers all the time. And same goes to the troll layer, by the way. Trolls are also much, much harder to be to be taken down, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. And that's something I like a lot, because creeping should not be the easiest thing in the world. We have some Rohirrim now, by the way, from the level 2 stable. I don't even know where the stable is, guys. Where are the stable? Where is the stable? Am I blind? I don't see the stable, guys. <laughs> what? Where are... How is he getting those uh, Rohirrim on the field? I don't get it. Oh, there is a stable at the top right side, hiding. I didn't even see that guy, guys, my bad. So Rohirrim are obviously going to be stronger than those Revenant Lancers, I think. Beautiful Trample. But that's not going to one-shot them. Uh, because of the whole crown stance. And the Lancers, they need to be careful against the Rohirrim. We have some pikemen now on the field from the Alvin player. Rallying Call is available, by the way. For both the players, it's going to be used now from the Alvin player first and from the Men of the West player second. But as long as the pikemen are around, he can't actually commit against the archers. He's going to fight against the lancers and he's actually one-shotting them with the Rohirrim. Holy quackamole, guys. And beautiful finish here, by the way, from the Man of the West player Mustafa. As the lancers were, you know, all about to escape, he was switching to the bow mod and actually killing them, which is very, very nice. The lancers from the Elven faction, they cost also 500 each, just like... Uh, the, the Gondonites. Yeah, the Gondonites are actually slightly more expensive. The Rohirrim are way more expensive. They cost 750 each. Which makes sense because they were just one-shotting those Lancers big time. Okay. Sauron is going to creep the work at the right side of the river. We have one more Lancer, you know, harassing the farms from the Man of the West player King Mustafa. He will definitely need some more pikemen. Talking about pikemen, the pikemen here at the bottom left side was just able to kill the trollier. Uh, which is going to give some money to Mustafa. Uh, he will also be able to save both to Rohirrim. One of them is actually level 2. Or both of them are actually level 2. Which is pretty nice. I like it. Okay. Um, one thing uh, I need to mention about the soldiers. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King. They can't use the shield wall formation. If they are not level 2. If you didn't purchase the Benakeri upgrade from the barracks. You can't use it. Which is available with level 1. Without any upgrades necessary for rise of the witch king guys okay the rohirrim they should be able to take down this malon tree not no big deal one lancer was able to survive so he will eventually need a weld which is called mirror of galadriel for the elven faction this way he can heal up those you know those units over time we have now the first hero and his name is legolas from the prince of the mirkwood elves so one of the mightiest heroes of middle earth is joining the battlefield Look at the Rohirrim damage, they are actually dealing a lot of damage to the Lancers, even from a safe distance, I like that. The farm is still gonna be taken down though, from the Man of the West player, Mustafa. We have 9 power points almost collected for the Elven player, and almost 10 power points collected for the Man of the West player. The stable is still remaining on the field, by the way it's a level 3 structure now with 7000 HP, and on top of that it also acts like a tower, it will be able to shoot at enemy units. Legolas is going to be hard to deal with. He's now level 2 already. He's going to be just killing those tower guards. No big deal. And we have now Boromir joining the battlefield, ladies and gentlemen. Boromir is a great hero, the captain of Gondor. He unlocks the Horn of Gondor with level 3, by the way. Um, which will stun the enemy units. Rallying Call has been used from both the players. It's a bad fight to take for the men of the West player. That's why he's forced to retreat. And Boromir has to be also very, very careful. The good thing here is that the army potentially not going to have the damage they need to take down the stable. Because the only unit that can actually deal damage are those pikemen. And they will need a lot of time. But remember, the stable is going to shoot them down as well. So I think this army is not going to be able to take down the stable. On the other side, this farm here in the bottom side will be taken down next. Boromium is diving in. And uh, Arrow Volley uh, from the Alvin player was dodged. It's going on cooldown now, some Rohirrim were able to survive. And yeah, the Man of the West player will actually be able to force his opponent to retreat. Boromir knocking down those uh, Lancers, he's all about his level 2. Legolas is in the middle of the map, he is by the way still only level 2, so he has to make something happen now in order to get the experience he needs. 
We have Archie arranged now up on the field for Mustafa, the man of the best player. 12 power points collected. Uh, Boromir is still chasing. There is a level 5 unit. And I think the man of the best player is going to try his best to take him down. But remember, the Albion units are able to get stealthed around the trees. Okay, um, this farm in the front side is going to be the next target from the Albion player. There is a world in which he will be able to take it down, but this is not this world, guys. This one is going to be defended for now from the Gonda archers. Let's take a look into the archer range. They cost also 200 each. The rangers, they're going to cost 600 each. They are very, very expensive. In compared to the Mirkwood archers, they are slightly, slightly cheaper. This ranges from the Man of the West faction. And Legolas has to be very careful. You don't want to be in melee range at all against Boromir and Rohirrim, guys. Boromir now is level 2. Has to be careful as well. Legolas is not shooting for some reason. He was using the whole crown stance. When you use whole crown stance with any unit, uh, the unit is not going to shoot at all. Like, he wants hit level 3, by the way, before he's going down. And Legolas was able to kill the captain of Gondor. The farm in the front side has been taken down. We have uh, some bomber deal going for the Sonic Song, but he, yeah, he's not going to hit anything but one, <laughs> one Miflon center unit, which is not going to be very impressive. A nice touch here from the Elven player Sauron, though. Very well done. Some bomber deal offers you leadership, 25% armor and 25% increased combat experience. But let's be honest, some bomber deal was kind of obvious and did not achieve too much for the man of the best player, King Mustafa. Okay, so we have Rohirrim still. They are recovering over time. We are getting some more tower guards on the field for defense and for the tankier units. So you can have some front line for the archers to, you know, keep them protected, obviously. Boromir is down. Legolas is level 4. Now he has unlocked the tra train archers with level 3 already. And he can start giving experience to the archers, guys. We are getting some more lances on the field. No heroes, but only Legolas is on the field so far from the Alvin player in Tauron. I keep calling him Entauron and Sauron from time to time. I hope you know what I'm talking about. He's using the nickname Entauron, but I know him as Sauron, you know? And Captain of the Gondor <laughs> is back in the business. Boromir is back now. He's all about to his level 3. Horn of Gondor is going to be very effective, by the way. Being able to stun the enemy units is always nice. And power points collected after the Tom Bomber deal for the Man of the West player. Yes, right now 750 command points available, which is pretty nice. 700 command points available for the Alvin player in Tauron. There's a lot of units on the field. Arrow Volley is going to be used once again. It deals actually a lot of damage to this Rohirrim. Holy guacamole. And every single Rohirrim from the Man of the West player is being taken down. That's massive. And the Arrow Volley, I like it because it hits multiple times. So you have to react. You have to dodge, guys. Legolas is going to use the Hoax Strike potentially. No, he's not going to use it. Uh, I would say, you know, if you have this ability available, just use it every time you have the chance to do, to do that. Because it's going to have the splash damage and you will be able to hit multiple units at once. Okay. Um, yeah, we have 800 command points now for the Man of the West play. He has a lot of resources collected. Around 3000 actually. We have a lot of units now moving forward. Um, but that's a risky move. I don't like this. Because Legolas can actually deal a lot of damage if you are grouped like this. Against some heroes, you don't want to be clumped. You don't want to be grouped too much, you know? Because Legolas, for example, has the Arrow Volley, which is going to deal damage in a small area, but he's going to be able to hit multiple units. And if you are grouping all your units together in a, in a really tiny space, Legolas' uh, Hoax Strike can actually, you know, kill your entire battalion like that. Okay, the Alvin player is pushing now from the bottom side. The Builder from the Man of the West player, Mustafa, was able to get in safety by building the Wall Hub. And that's something you will see quite a lot. They are, all, they are often using Wallhaps just to save the Builder, because Wallhap is extremely tanky, guys, and very, very hard to be taken down. I don't be fooled too much about the health of the building, because the health doesn't matter too much. I think it's about the resistance of the building, much more than about the health. In order to take down the Wallhap, you will need to commit for like a minute, you know, while the farm with similar health uh, is going to be taken down in a second. Okay. So Legolas is taking free damage, but I think he has to sustain. He can also go for the heal, which is, by the way, uh, available for the Alvin player. That it is. And Captain of Gondo is going to use his Horn of Gondo to, you know, stun the enemy units. He now has the time for to trample beautiful here with the Rohirrim. That nice Wombo combo, actually. And look at that. We have now the King of Gondo, the King of the Men of the West, Aragorn, Araton's son, joining the battlefield for Mustafa, the Men of the West player. And Aragorn is a very mighty hero, 
which unlocks the Anduril Sword with level 5. It's a passive ability, unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1. It's gonna increase the damage by Ar from Aragorn by 10% only, but on top of that, you're gonna get also 7% movement speed. That's gonna give you a great chase and cat, cat po uh, I can't talk, catch potential against the enemy heroes. And also, Boromir is very, very effective with the Horn of Gonzo. I think this ability is the only reason why we actually see Boromir. Because let's be honest, without that, he, would, he wouldn't be that useful, you know? But this offers you a great Wombo Combo potential, for example, with Tom Bombadil. Like, you use Horn of Gonzo, stun the enemy units, you summon Tom Bombadil, so they won't be able to dodge the incoming damage from the Sonic Song. Atelas is gonna be used to heal Boromir, by the way. Unlike in the movie, this time this Aragorn is able to save the Captain of Gonzo. Okay, uh, Elrond is on the field, he's quite fast and mobile, look at this movement speed from this dude. The Madon tree in the front side is being taken down, Elven players are a lot of units but he's not doing anything with them around the top left side. Degolas is gonna use the train arches now, finally. This archer battalion by the way is almost level 7 guys and like mentioned several times, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the normal units in BFME 2 are able to hit level 10. That's something I like more in Battle for Middle Earth 2 than in Rise of the Witch King because you know, you should get some uh, credits for saving your units all the time. And being able to get them to level 10 should be rewarding as well. And that's the case in Battle for Middle Earth 1, but also in BFME 2. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which only heroes or mini heroes like Black Riders or Fire Drakes are able to hit level 10. But all the other units are only are kept at level 5. Okay, Aragorn is level almost 5. Yes, uh, leadership now unlocked. He has a high tier hero leadership, by the way, guys. Uh, you can see there are some differences between different heroes in terms of leadership system. Cheap heroes have weaker leadership. Expensive heroes have stronger leadership, guys. Uh, a lot of Rohirrim on the field. Uh, we have some small map control fights going on. Arrow Volley was used once again. Um, actually, no. It was from the Man of the West player, okay. But the stable is going down, that means no more Rohirrim any soon. And look at the leadership from Boromir, for example. Boromir has, with level 5, unlocked the damage leadership. And I like this leadership a lot because it gives you 50% increased damage. While Aragorn's leadership, let's take a look into that. Uh, he has to be somewhere, right? There he is. He gives you 25% damage and armor. And armor is so important, guys. Trust me. I mean... 25% damage doesn't sound too crazy, but the armor you get, which you don't get from Boromir's leadership, will make the leadership from Aragorn much more impactful in a in an even fight. Okay, so Elrond, I mean Haldir is also on the field. Haldir is also leadership, by the way, which is similar to the leadership from Boromir. It's exactly the same, actually. Tom Bombadil was used once again. Rallying Cold is being used, I think, on these units uh, from the Man of the West player. Yeah, he was using it. Um, yeah, look, he's peeling back now to dodge Tom Bombadil, actually. Arrow Volley was used this time from the Alvin player to kill a lot of Rohirrim. And also Cloud Break is available. And we have also Transuil now on the field, guys. So it's a Alvin, it's a hero fiesta. The Fellowship of the Elves against the Fellowship of the, of the Men of the West. Range damage 400, Alvin Cloak becomes invisible when standing still. It's a passive ability. And unlike in uh, Rise of the Witch King, here he is also able to get on his on his horse, and he's only um, a range hero here, right? Yeah, he's only a range hero. Even on horse, he's gonna act like a Rohirrim archer. Aragorn and Boromir side by side by side. That's what we like to see. Almost command points kept for the Elven player, and the Man of the West player is actually full command points, guys. One thousand is the limit. You can't have more than that. Elrond has also high tier leadership, uh, which is the exact same version like from Aragorn. And Transuil has no leadership, if I'm not mistaken. No, he has no leadership. But this is a very strong ability. Cloudbreak is being used now to stun the enemy units, but Aragorn with Blade Master is hitting like an absolute track. Look at this damage he's dealing to Haldir. I mean, Haldir is only level 1. Horn of Gonda is coming in clutch. Elrond now has leadership unlocked with level 4 and has Foresight with level 2, by the way. And Elrond is also pretty tanky, 3700 HP with level 4, Aragorn has the same amount of HP. I think Aragorn is like the same like uh, Elrond in most stages of the game, but Aragorn is gonna get the passive damage boost with level 5. And he's all about his level 5. 
And you know, you can see the differences, right? The heroes, they are able to level up very, very fast until level 4. But then it's gonna become more and more difficult. Like with Aragorn, for example. If you get them get Aragorn on the field, and you literally creep one work layer only, you will get some level 4 immediately. But look who is here, guys! Look who is here, it's Gandalf himself. The mighty hero, the mighty Maya, sent to Middle-earth to protect the humans. And here he is. Our most favorite wizard from all the films and movies we are watching so far. Rohirimar level 5, you know, pressuring, harassing all the time, taking down the Malon trees one by one. That's what we like to see. Uh, Haldir is here as well. He is level 3. Uh, Golden Arrow is pretty effective, by the way. Uh, effective against uh, cavalry and weak heroes, so in this case it would only affect Boromir because other, other heroes are Gandalf and Aragorn, so they are not weak by all means. Uh, where is Boromir actually? I would love to see now a Wombo combo potential. Oh, the stun is coming in clutch! Arrow volley from the Rangers. Gil is coming in clutch though. Ara uh, Gandalf is looking for an opportunity to actually go for a beautiful wizard blast. We're gonna keep an eye on that one, guys. You shall not pass! Oh yeah, I like to see that. Now he's level 3, that's gonna give him the chance to get on his Shadow Vex. And look at this, uh, Tranduil is sitting like a track ass with the Deadeye. Uh, it's gonna give him, for a short period of time, increased attack damage and rate of fire, which means attack speed, loses 15% armor though while this is active. So he's gonna be more vulnerable against damage. But Gandalf? Is holy moly. He's now level 4. Level 5 is gonna turn him into, into the Gandalf the White. That's gonna make him more powerful, by the way. And yeah, Gandalf has also is quite tanky, by the way, guys. Uh, which is surprising. He's even tankier than Aragorn. So he's. And on top of that, you have also a shield. Like the shield bubble you can activate with W on your keyboard. It's gonna give you immunity to knock back. And also, you will absorb any kind of damage. <laughs> For like a short period of time, I think around five seconds, which is a long time, by the way. That's gonna give you the give you the time you need in order to dive in, use your shield bubble, become immune almost to damage, and then go for a beautiful wizard plus, you know. Elrond is also here, so we have now the fellowship of elves against the fellowship of the men of the west, pretty much. Boromir, Aragorn, and Gandalf side by side, so almost the entire fellowship. But Legolas is missing, Gimli is missing. Obviously, they are in different factions in BFME too. And also, the Hobbits are missing, like Frodo, Baggins, uh, you know, Merry, Samwise, Gamgee, and also, most importantly, Harry Green took. Okay, so we have a tower coming up for the Man of the West player Mustafa in the middle, offensively, actually, at the left side. Uh, yeah, this guy is dealing a decent amount of damage to Rohirrim, reasonable amount of damage to Rohirrim, one-shotting them. But he's also receiving a lot of damage. This is a glass cannon hero. Heal is not as effective in... There is a giant eagle also, by the way. Heal is not as effective in, uh, say it, in Battle for Middle-earth 2 or Rise of the Witch King as it is in BFME 1. In BFME 1, this would, you know, heal Tranduil up to full HP. But on the other side, you have a much larger heal radius. Like, for example, in, in BFME 1, it's like this. In BFME 2, it's like this, you know, you can heal, like, in a large area, guys. But I would prefer the heal from BFME 1 more. Because even if it's a small area, you can still heal the most impactful and relevant heroes slash units to full HP. Nice hook strike, by the way, from Legolas. He's now level 7. Level 10 is gonna unlock the arrow volley, which will, you know, make him shoot like a machine gun in a, in a big circle, dealing massive damage. Gandalf is not getting mounted. He's finally getting on his Shadow of X, guys. But he's still Gandalf the Grey. However, he's gonna hit level 5 soon, that's gonna unlock his white. Is Aragorn level 5 yet? Almost. <laughs> Multiple towers are coming up, he's gonna even put some ranges inside of that. Ranzuil is taking damage from the arrows, but not a big deal. That's, a, that's the weakness of the Elven faction, right? Without the ants, you can't siege them. Even though towers or buildings generally are very, very easy to be taken down in BFME 2, in compared to Rise of the Witch King, for example. The Barracks is still level 1, no Mirkwoods any soon. Um, the Eagle is fighting for the map control, he is gonna come out with level 10. Unlike in uh, Rise of the Witch King, the Eagle doesn't have any abilities to be unlocked. Remember, the Eagle in Rise of the Witch King has the Wing Blast, which can be very efficient, by the way, against Clumped Army. Gandalf is just looking around a little bit. I wish Mustafa would be playing a little bit more aggressively with the, with the Gandalf, especially when you're 
Yeah, shield bubble is available. He's gonna use now the dead eye. He's, they are both shooting outside of the range of the tower. Oh, lightning sword, was he able to catch them? No, he's gonna cancel it, which is smart. Uh, look at this range from Tranduil, though. That's crazy, guys, right? And the damage as well, like with this. But now it's on cooldown. Uh, that means the damage now will be much less, obviously. But the Eagle can finish off this tower, by the way. It's almost down. And the Man of the West faction, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, doesn't have Rebuild as the spell from the spellbook. Level 5. And he's turning to white, guys. The Shield Bubble is gonna be used. We're gonna zoom in for Gandalf. And he has everything on cooldown, so I don't know about that. Uh, he's gonna use Arrow Volley and one-shotting them. Arrow Volley is dealing a lot of damage to Kev, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. In, in Rise of the Witch King, it's only effective against infantry units. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's completely different in, than in Rise of the Witch King, because in Rise of the Witch King, it hits only once. But then it leaves a fire on the ground that's gonna deal damage over time. In BFME 2, it hits like three times, but no fire on the ground. The Goras is gonna hit more levels, obviously. Boromir is running for his life from Elrond. Elrond is also pretty effective with level 10. Heals 20% of uh, Nurbi allies and fully refreshes their special ability timers, which is, by the way, very nice. When you re can reset the Torn of Vengeance and, you know, the uh, Wild Walk and also the Death's Eye from this guy. From Legolas, you can reset the Arrow Volley ability uh, right after he uses that when your Elrond is level 10. I mean, the Elven player is kind of in a, in a really bad spot. He's kind of forced to be very, extremely defensive. Right now, there are towers, there are now some trebuchets on the field. The siege will begin. Let's see how much damage this is going to deal against trebuchets. Not that much, actually. Which is expected, because arrows are not very efficient against siege weapons, besides against giants. Okay, Whirlwind is available. Beautiful one more time. Level 6, by the way, guns up. There is a chance in a world we might see him getting level 10 in this one, guys. Cloudbreak is being used now from the Alvin player to stun the enemy units as well. Rohirima oh, running away. They are level 5. They should be hopefully able to get away. It's nice to save those units. Aragorn is finally level 5. Unreal passive is unlocked. Uh, Whirlwind is available for Eldrons, but there are no possible targets. Oh, the Sun Flare. Look at the animation from Sunflare, guys. Did you see that? That looks so nice, so dope. He killed a lot. I mean, the animations in BFME 2, and that's something I have to admit. And even if I don't admit that, you know that already, right? BFME 2 has much more animations, much, much better graphics and animations than Rise of the Witch King does. Like, we are talking about the vanilla game, of the basic game. Of course, um, Rise of the Witch King has a mod which is called Age of the Ring. Uh, if you are looking for graphics animations, you should be definitely trying out this patch. I mean, this uh, mod for Rise of the Witch King, it's huge. Army of the Dead is being used this time from the Man of the West player, I'm, I've, but Gandalf might die here. Uh, the bubble is on cooldown. The ranges, can they save him? I think he needs still two hits. Yeah, he needs still two hits if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he should be able to get, get saved. Oh, I would just risk the biscuit. Just commit and try to kill him. But Gandalf is going to be able to survive. The heroes from the Alvin player, Sauron, are quite fast and mobile. They should be able to dodge army after that most of the time. They should be able to get away. But on the other side, the Alvin player lost every single unit he had on the field. And Gandalf is still remaining as well as Boromir and I think also Aragorn, if I'm not mistaken. Even though I can't see Aragorn on the fields now. Uh, the Siege Works, uh, which is called Workshop. Or it's called Siege Works, actually. It's called Workshop in BFME 1. He's still remaining on the field. And uh, we have also Glorfindel on the field, level 1. Uh, Blade of Purity uh, is gonna give him... Um, <laughs> he's gonna be unkillable for 10 seconds. <laughs> but you can only use it when dismounted. You can only use it when you are on foot. But it is completely different in compared to Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, you only get 50% increased armor for like a short duration. But in uh, BFME 2, you get literally unkillable, <laughs> which is massive. Okay, level almost 6. Level 6, I think, is gonna unlock the Wild Walk. Uh, you can uh, move and shoot Wild Staff, wild staff which is pretty nice. Uh, I think Transuil is a really impactful hero, by the way. Uh, but can he face against the mighty Gandalf? That's the question. Who's almost level 7, by the way, guys. Um, yeah, Gandalf is very tanky. Even this ability, right? The, the, the dead eye is not dealing that much damage to him. 
extremely tanky. Look at this HP, guys. He has almost 5,000 health with level 6. And let's compare that with a hero like, for example, uh, where is Aragorn? Boromir, for example, right? Boromir is only 3,500. Like, 1,000 and something less than Gandalf. And I think also Aragorn has the same ratio. Aragorn is also not as tanky as Gandalf. The eagle is going to make it out alive. Uh, oh, knocks down. Um, that's that's one of the best things about Boromir, that he's able to knock down the enemy units or heroes. Uh, what is Glorfindel doing here? He has played off purity, so Gandalf shouldn't cast any abilities just yet. There is a blacksmith, by the way, level 3. Upgrades are incoming. But remember, you can't use the blade of purity when you are mounted. Gandalf is sitting not very hard against Glorfindel. Melee damage-wise, Gandalf is not the greatest. Um, but his abilities are gonna make him very, very efficient. Legolas is back in the business, level 8. Uh, Haldir is level 4, so he's still way, way off from the Golden Arrow, which is gonna be something like a like a Cloud Break. Stuns light-sensitive enemy units. I don't know, if this this sounds different than in Rise of the Witch King. I don't know if you can also stun like Gondor soldiers, for example. Because in the description it says you can only stun light-sensitive enemy units. So, Men of the West units are not... They don't fear light, right? Okay, uh, the Cloud Break is a fairly low cooldown, actually, in this game. I think they are just using it like for three or four times now. Legolas is level 9, level 10 again will unlock his arrow volley. That's gonna be a huge power spike. Gandalf, uh, Aragorn is here. Has 3800 HP with level 5. And Gandalf has 4850 with level 6. <laughs> so Gandalf is extremely tanky. And the fact that you have shield bubble is gonna make him even tankier. You know, Wizard Plus is available. Easter Light is available. It's gonna be used now. Oh, he was not he was able to kill something. He got a lot of experience, almost half a level. 15 power points collected now by the Elven player after the Sun Flare. It's a fiesta game, guys. Don't take this game too serious. It's, and it's like heroes, you know? I like to see heroes, what are they able to do in the late game when they have a lot of abilities unlocked, or, you know? And that is almost level 8. Eagle here. Just fighting for the map control, left and right, killing some farms here and there. This each works is actually tanky. 4,500 HP. The Eagle is not dealing too much damage. Against the Siege Warwicks. Aragorn, though, with the Blade Master, you deal more damage and have more armor. <clears throat> but I would say the Blade of Purity is much, 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 much. Oh, can he hit him? Yes, he hit him. Oh, the damage. Oh, nice one. He was bursting down the Eagle in a second. I mean, Lightning Sword is a strong ability. Glorfindel is trying to take down the Blacksmith. He was already able to purchase every single upgrade. But the blacksmith is going to be eventually taken down. There is also a marketplace in the backside. Grand Harvey is not purchased just yet. Iron Ore is not purchased as well as the siege materials. Okay, uh, Gandalf. Three heroes against Gandalf. <laughs> Elrond, Haldir and uh, Tranduil. I think the Alvin units or heroes are not very good against Gandalf, you know? Look at that, they don't deal damage to him. It's not about Gandalf being OP in terms of damage output, as I would as I would like to see him, you know. I would like to see Gandalf the way he was or he is in BFME 1. In BFME 1, Gandalf is mainly a glass cannon hero that deals massive damage with low cooldowns on his spells, but he's extremely squishy, you know. Unlike in BFME 2, in BFME 2 it's the other way around, like he has low, uh, long cooldowns on his abilities. But he's extremely tanky, he's like Gimli, you know what I'm saying? Like, extremely tanky. Like, for example, just an example for you guys so you can understand what I'm trying to say. Like, Legolas with level 7, in Beef Me 1, if he has a chance to shoot Gandalf like 10 times, Gandalf is dead. Like, Gandalf is dead. If you catch Gandalf off guard with your arrow volley, you can kill Gandalf from 100 to 0 X only with your arrow volley, even... But well, there are some ends actually from the summon even if he uses the heal. That's how powerful Legolas is and how squishy Gandalf is. The level 3 farm is being taken down. Uh, Gandalf, Aragorn, by the way, is also level 6. Uh, Easter Light is available. He could have taken down his uh, Lancer, but he sh Aragorn, I mean, uh, not Aragorn, say it. Glorfindel. With the Easter Light, I think he would be able to finish him off. He's still around this area, I think, uh, and Tauron is not paying attention. Farm level 3 in the front side is being taken down next. Um, okay, Sranduil is almost level 8. And let's take a look into the Torn of Vengeance, right? 
extremely powerful single shot attack that causes damage for 15 seconds. The target is reduced to 70% movement speed only. Effective against strong heroes. Okay. I would love to see Thor of Vengeance against Gandalf. Just to see how much damage that would deal. Cloudbreak is being used now to stun the rangers as they got summoned. And that's a nice move here from Sauron and he's killing them the second they got spawned. Very nice. And now you gotta keep an eye on this one. What a beautiful Wizard Blast potential. He's not going for it though. If I would be if I would be Mustafa, I would just send all my units back to my base and I would just play with Gandalf at this point, you know? Just to get him level 10 for the memes. Because I would like to I would like you to show you guys the animation in BFME 2 with the Word of Power. I made already a story video about uh, about uh, this. I mean about uh, the I mean I've you know casted some games already from 1.09, which was including Gandalf level 10 and 2v2s mostly. But they are very very old and I don't know where they is, where they are. And I think you would like to see the Gandalf level 10 Word of Power animation in BFME 2 guys. And compared to Rise of the Witch King, it looks beyond standards. It looks amazing. Trust me. Okay, level 6 Eldrond. Um, Eldrond is more like a sporty fury in my opinion, because look at his spells, like Atelas, heal, you know, for the allied heroes around him, foresight giving you vision, leadership obviously, you know, for the utility part, the whirlwind is the only one, only thing that can deal damage, but deals minimal damage to the enemy units, it's much more about the disabling effect that you can, you know, knock them up all the time, and then also the restoration is also very sportive. Like, you are refreshing the abilities from your allied heroes around you and also healing up your units. Like, he is like the Gorkil the Goblin King, but weaker. <laughs> like, Gorkil the Goblin King has like a devastating power with level 10. Oh, the Arrow Volley is coming in class. Look at the Arrow Volley animation, dude. Oh, I love to see that. Oh, but Gandalf with the Easter Elite. He's like, you are not touching my units this today. It is not this day, as Aragorn would like to say. Tom Bombadil is so powerful, everyone is running away from him, but he's very, very mobile. He's actually fast and he will, he will be able to catch them. Legolas is down. He was level 10, he was using the arrow volley. Uh, Gandalf is almost level 9, guys. Uh, Alright, so we have... Yeah, I would like... You know, what I would love to see is definitely the golden arrow, but he still needs 5 levels for that. And also, Thorn of Vengeance. <laughs> That's what I would love to see. Glorfindel is back in the building. The Alvin player is very behind, like he has kind of full command points for some reason. But look at the Malon trees he has. He has. He's just building them next to each other. There is a massive wall coming up for the Alvin player actually. <laughs> to protect this area. This is from the Alvin player, right? Yeah, it's from the Alvin player. You wanna cut off this pathway kinda. And expand around this side, just why not? <laughs> I like that. That's something, that's, a, that's something you can do in Battle for Middle Earth 2 and Rise of the Witch King. But no one is doing that in competitive games obviously. Because you won't have the money and the time to do that, obviously, right? That's why we don't see many, many units or heroes we would normally see in normal games in the tournaments we are hosting. But it's uh, it's refreshing to do something like this from time to time to see actually the fiesta potential in Battle for Middle Earth 2. And to see what the heroes are able to do if you give them the chance, if you invest the time into them. Like this game is including most of the time hero action. Like we have heroes running around the map, trying to kill each other, getting some experience, trying to unlock the abilities, uh, which is something we would normally not see in a normal game. Eagle is not dealing too much damage to Aragorn, by the way. Aragorn is extremely tanky against Eagle as well. And he has also Atelas, just like Elrond does for the heal. Um, Glorfindel is level 5. Gandalf is almost level 9. Ooh, oh, oh, that's. Watch, guys. Watch now. Watch. Oh, he's going for the arrow volley. Uh, he's not gonna hit everything. Anything. Does heal. Some of some of the units are still stunned, but some of them are not. Like Torn of Vengeance. Uh, I mean, that eye is being used to damage Gandalf, but Gandalf is very tanky, like mentioned several times before. He's not tanky against Pikeman though, so he has to be careful. What a sun flare! The Sunflare and Gandalf is down to the Sunflare. Look at the animation of Sunflare, guys. That looks dope. I like it. But that means Army of the Red is almost back up. Aragorn was able to survive. 28 power points collected by the Man of the West player Mustafa, by the way. And he will still be able to defend himself. Now we have the Tom Bombadil being summoned from the Alvin player this time. 
Um, I think it's pretty much the same summon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Whirlwind is being used from Eldrond. A lot of animations are going on right now. Yeah, it's it's the same. Like they are both the same. And <laughs> look at this. Arrow Volley is being being used. Look at the animations happening right now in your screen, guys. Uh, actually, the Rohirrim are dealing a lot of damage from the summon. This is uh, this are from the summon. It's called Rohan Allies. And now the army of the dead will be summoned, guys. Uh, Legolas, can he escape that one? That's the question. He just got, re you know, revived again. He was dead before. Remember Gandalf was killing him? Uh, Glorfindel is using the Blade of Purity. Again, that's going to make him un invulnerable. It's not going to take any damage. Is he cutting his own way off? No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. I was like, he has a gate there anyway, so he should be able to escape. But are the Rohirrim going to make it? Yeah, they're going to make it through the... What, are, what is this wall, guys? I don't get it. The Army of the Dead is still chasing. I mean, you can't catch him with Army of the Dead, but you can catch them if catch him with Rohirrim easily. He is on cooldown, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's on cooldown. But with that being said, I think Legolas is not going to make it out alive. Uh, but Glorfindel was able to survive. Legolas is down with the Rallying Call now being used. Um, yeah, full command points now for the Man of the West player for a long time. I would say the difference in terms of resource. Oh, they have a legendary 1v1 fight. We're going to take a look into that one. Aragorn, the king of the West, king of the men of the West, is dead. <laughs> is dead, just like that. Elrond is like, I'm the king now, you know, I'm the king now. We have Eagle now summoned uh, from the Elven player for defensive purposes. So with that being said, he should be able to survive for now. Uh, he has finally a wall, which is, I think, no, you can't make it out from this side, right? You shouldn't. So this side is now protected. With that being said, the Man of the West player shouldn't be able to enter this area from this side at least. But you can go around this area anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, Gandalf should be back in the business very soon. Remember, he got killed before. We've also seen the Ivory Tower being used, by the way, from the Man of the West player Mustafa. Which means you will reveal the Shroud and player units in the map gain 10% movement speed. Like, your units are going to be faster, which is a nice feature, but I would say... All the other factions are better, like much better. Like for example, the goblin you can you know get a big fire drake on the field. With the with the elven faction you can recruit a giant eagle. With Mordo you can you know summon the uh, fireball of Gorgorov, You know with Isengard you have the thunderbolt. But with Men of the West you reveal shroud. Sounds like meh to me. Uh, Rohirrim with heavy armor, forge plates, full upgrades. They look nice by the way with the upgrades. And now let's see, they want... I, I want to see if they can actually reach this side without having to destroy the wall. I'm curious. You shall see now. When well, they can't, right? They can't. <laughs> but they, they can't. <laughs> oh, that's so foolish. That's so trollish. I like it, though. I like it. Oh, can he go around it? Nice wall, bro. Nice wall, bro. <laughs> oh, that's so unfortunate. He's building finally now, but it's too late. Now this one Rohirrim is going to take down every single Malone tree around this side. He has to use Arrow Volley. Uh, he is not gonna hit. I mean, one hit only. But the others were not able to connect. Now he has to move all the way to the bot side with the with Haldir. Just because they were able to pass through a tiny pathway like this. That's very, very unfortunate for the Elven player in Sauron. <laughs> okay, uh, he's almost level 9, Transwheel. Level 10 again. He's gonna unlock his ultimate ability, which is called Turn of Vengeance. This Elrond is almost level 9. No, kind of level 8 still. He's gonna even use the Cloud Break, can you imagine, to just stun the one Rohirrim here, who saved the level 3 Malon tree. But the thing is, I think he's gonna still lose it. He's gonna still lose it. The one Rohirrim? No, he's gonna save it. Barely. Okay. But in order to keep these Malon trees alive, he also has to build walls around this side, you know, just to cut them off entirely. So he has to literally make some siege weapons. Oh, talking about siege weapons, ends got summoned, but they got killed the second they got summoned. Uh, the rangers are, you know, burning them down alive. Eagle is fighting for the map control, but the rangers are dealing a lot of damage. And look at that. Who got back in the business and his name... Oh, he was using the lightning sword. Okay, that's why they were burning. And Gandalf is almost level 10, guys. So from now on, I will just focus on Gandalf until he hits level 10. Because I don't want to miss the chance of him using the ward of power. Uh, and I, wanna, I don't want to watch anything else but his ward of power now. <laughs> just left, leave the last hits to Gandalf. Oh, yeah, level 10, ladies and gentlemen. You know what time it is. It is time for Gandalf to shine. Gandalf the White unlocked the ultimate ability. And, it, you know, it's it's called the Vault of Power. 
you shall not pass. And then the animation is gonna go through and you will see how beautiful this looks like. Watch now guys. He's gonna not use it obviously to kill like two units. That's not gonna be necessary. Wizard Blast is gonna do the work as well. Uh, yeah, level 9 still almost. Not even level 10 yet. Watch. Oof, the animation though! You see that, guys? I mean, compare that to any other battle form. I mean, the animation... Hear me out, guys. Gandalf's animation of War of Power is looking amazing regardless in which PFME it is. But this tops them all, you know? Like, this is... The, it's it's Worfy. It's like Worfy 2021. It looks like a modern uh, RTS game to me just because of this one animation. My most favorite hero, you know? Gandalf. A hero I would love to see much more often. You know, also Aragorn is pretty strong, 4000 HP now. Let me check the levels, I mean the HP from Gandalf. He has 5250 with level 10. Date of Purity. You can't even target him, okay? You can't target him when he has this active. Alright, it makes sense. I mean, you are invulnerable. But you are also not, I think, you should be calling it untargetable. Like, you can't target him, you know? You can't deal damage to him because you are not able to target him. But now it's gone. Now he's gonna be vulnerable again. Okay, so the eagle is fighting still for the map control. I like the way that the Elven player is always keeping, a, keeping an eye on the map control and trying to kill some farms left and right. Earthquake was used before I missed this one, by the way, unfortunately. Water power has a long cooldown. Kill is being used. Uh, level... Oh, level 9 unlocks the Torn of Vengeance. I take it back. Level 9... I, now I want to see that. one shot it by the way. one shot it. I, he was already low. It was Glorfindel, by the way, who just got killed. Turn and fight. But remember, he has the shield bubble on, on cooldown. Okay. So I'm curious about how much damage Thranduil's Torn of Vengeance would have would deal against Gandalf the White. Level 10. If he ever gonna use it. 17 power points collected by Mustafa, the man of the West player. We have Heal, Rallying Call, Tom Bombadil, Arrow Volley, Cloud Break, Rohirrim, Rangers, Army of the Dead, and Earthquake being available or being chosen, not available. Indeed, only Rallying Call and Heal are available right now from the spellbook. On the other side, we have the Elven player with the Rallying Call available, Heal on cooldown, Foresight, Tom Bombadil, Arrow Volley, Cloud Break, Ants, Eagles, and the Sun Flare. And the man of the West player is saying, you know what you can do? I can do it as well. And he's just gonna say, thank you very much. This area belongs now to me. He has this in under his control so he can pretty much recruit some Elven warriors and try to fight his... Oof! What? What was that? You see that, guys? Oh, he used the bubble. Okay, that's why. I was like, what the heck was that? Because the Thorn of Vengeance was just used? And it dealt, it dealt zero damage to Gandalf because of the shield wall, because of the... Oh, he's missing. He was missing the arrow wall, unfortunately, on Gandalf. And if he's dodging everything, it's like the, like the nail from Matrix, you know, like, dodge this, you know? Okay, so 18 power points collected, 975 available for Mustafa. The money is not an issue in this game, right? Everyone has enough money. Now, I feel like the Elven player has not enough units on the field, though. He has, like, couple of weak units no upgrades coming any soon i think yes a level two now it's not going for the flat we're gonna we wanna go, i wanna see that one actually i wanna see flats now being used offensively potentially against the buildings and i think that's gonna be the case he's gonna oh he's using it there we go he's using it uh one shotting the archer range but the barracks is also gone okay that's kind of funny because you could see the building it disappeared right after kind of buggy Okay, Eldrond is also almost level 9. Alright, I see you. I see you. Thorn of Vengeance is almost back up. Uh, Gandalf has still, you know, <laughs> cooldown on Word of Power. And that's the thing. Like, compare that with the Thorn of Vengeance. Thorn of Vengeance has way less cooldown than Gandalf's Word of Power. Like, he was using it before. The Thorn of Vengeance. Much more before. Like, a minute before. And uh, Thorn of Vengeance is back up already. But... Uh, the War of Power is still on cooldown, which makes sense, let's be honest, because I think being able to deal a massive damage to a single target hero is not as impactful than being able to kill the entire enemy army, you know what I'm saying? Like, this ability is like as destructive as Army of the Dead, for example. Deals massive damage to every unit around him. Aragorn is also very, very tanky. With Aragorn, you are also able to summon Army of the Dead. 
with level 10. Um, Gandalf, was just using the Wizard Blast. Sunflare to kill Gandalf! Actually, the Sunflare is dealing massive damage. Oh, that was so unlucky, actually. He was not even using the Shield, uh, shield Bubble yet. He's gonna try to finish him off. Foresight was used to see Gandalf. Maybe he's... Oh, he's gonna summon the Eagles. But watch now, guys. The bubble. But, but the bubble is gonna save the day, right? Oh, he's using it too early. He should just wait for the next attack before... The, you know, look, he's receiving zero damage. Heal is on cooldown, though, if I'm not mistaken, guys. No, it's available for the for the men of the West player. So he's actually beating him. I think he doesn't even need to use it. Right? No, he doesn't even need to use it. The Eagles are not dealing too much damage to heroes for some reason. He's gonna get him inside the tower. <laughs> what a memer. <laughs> so he's in safety for now. But Shield Bubble was used. So keep that in mind. Because now the Tower of Vengeance is not gonna be blocked anymore. The first time uh, Tranduil was trying to kill Gandalf. The Shield Bubble was able to absorb almost nearly every... You know, the entire damage. Pretty much. Okay, so... Uh, there is a wall blocking for the Man of the West player, this per this area, the same situation around this side. They are like, okay, this is your area, this is belongs to you, please don't invade my side. And they are just attacking from the middle pretty much all the time. Eagle is gonna be gone very very soon, Gandalf is still inside the tower by the way, so he's in safety, don't worry about Gandalf. What was- what? Did he really use now the Torn of Vengeance against the tower? No way he did, right? He did! I think what what <laughs> I know what happened, guys. I think he was targeting Gandalf from here, right? When Gandalf was not inside the tower yet. And then Tranjil walked all the way up here. But because Gandalf was inside the tower, he was automatically out, you know, using it against the tower. Which is kind of funny to me. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? Oh, okay, heal is being used. Rohirmar dying to the arrow volley. Arrow volley is hitting also Gandalf. Actually dealing a lot of damage to Gandalf, even though he was hitting multiple units and Gandalf at the same time. Heal is on cooldown, but the bubble is available. I mean, is that light is available? I think it's gonna one-shot almost every hero around this side. Uh, they are using everything against him. Golden arrow was used, but again, it's good only against weak heroes, not against Gandalf. Uh, restoration was used. Uh, wait a second. He could have used the Torn of Vengeance twice against them because of the restoration. Like level 10 Adelrond, level 10 Haldir, level 9 Transwheel, and Legolas is also level 10. Okay, heal is being used to save Adelrond. The Alvin heroes are fast enough to get away. But remember, there is a wall, so they are blocked, kinda. <laughs> Easter Light was used on something. I don't know what was used. No, it was not Easter Light. I think it was the animation from Army of the Dead. I'm confused right now, guys. But he's trapped. Like, what? what's now? I mean, the army of the dead is gonna be gone, but now the man of the west player has... Can he go around it? Yes, he can. I mean, they, these guys, they don't know how to build walls, guys. <laughs> that happened also around this area. Remember before with the Rohirrim? They were able to just get around this area. And then he was forced to use Cloudbreak to just save the Mal Malon 3 level 3 here. <laughs> what a fiesta game it is. What an absolute clown fiesta game it is, guys. But I, I bet I'm gonna upload that still on YouTube, by the way. I hope you're gonna like this one. Uh, if you do, please don't forget to leave a like as well to these videos because likes are helping out a lot. And also subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. If you want to see more competitive gameplay, however, make sure to follow me on my Twitch channel, guys, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Uh, the link down in the description. Uh, we are hosting tournaments, you know, events, daily tournaments, big tournaments. I would love to see you guys also in the live streams. Okay, so Glorfindel is just doing his work. Uh, Wind Rider is gonna double armor and 40% movement speed. He's gonna be the fastest rider in the universe. Uh, human Wood was used, I think. Right? That's the Human Wood. Or the Alvin Wood. Um, it's different, right? It's different, yes. It's different. I mean, the, the Alvin Wood is much more powerful, actually. Look at this now. Uh, crates. Uh, last terrain uh, whose center creates a perspective shield against tainted land and, or human wood from the enemy. Allied units gain armor, damage, and experience. <laughs> Overrides uh, leadership effects from allies 
enemy cavalry rate is raised by 250%. What? I'm confused about the description. That's a lot of information in one spell only, you know? Okay. Where is Gandalf when we need him? Did he die? Maybe he's dead. No, he's here. What of power was used, but I missed this one. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, you have seen already the animation at the first place. Aragorn is actually melting those uh, ants. Look at the fat ant. That's a nice ant, though. That was a fat ant. I mean, this ant was just going too many times to Mer Burger King or McDonald's, guys. The eagle is doing a work. And the elven player has slightly the upper hands now. The flat is on cooldown as well as the sun flare. Eagles are, I mean, the ants are dealing a lot of damage. Now we have a builder back in the business. Um, for, you know, expanding obviously. But the man of the west player has still, actually he lost everything, guys. His command point scamped, has no money. He lost the blacksmith, he lost the marketplace. I mean, he has only, what, one, two farms outside on the, on the field. But heroes, heroes are still remaining. I mean, at least Aragorn and Gandalf, the most relevant heroes, are still remaining on the field. Gandalf has lightning sword ability available. Um, okay, uh, Ton of Vengeance, Vengeance is, on, is on cooldown, guys. Uh, there is nothing that can hurt the eagle besides Gandalf. I mean, he can use the lightning sword against him. Smart move here, killing the Rohirrim first. There is no point of attacking Gandalf because we have seen he's like immune to damage pretty much against. Oh, the Hobbit allies. <laughs> That's a nice one. He's using it with the Ivory Tower, by the way. He was using the Ivory Tower to reveal everything. This way he was able to summon. Because in order to summon something in uh, any battle for Middle Earth game, you have to get vision. If you don't have vision, you can't summon anything, right? In BFME 1 as well as in BFME 2 in Rise of the Witch King, guys. <laughs> the Alvin units are just passing through. He has to, you know, extend the, the wall around this side, you know, like this, for example. And you don't want them to pass through your expensive wall like that for free. <laughs> I don't know. Aragorn is level 9. He still needs one level for the army of the dead. Elrond is level 10 also. Very, very powerful hero. He's also quite tanky, by the way. And now you can reset the Vengeance, right? Ton of Vengeance, yeah. So what can happen now, pretty much, is he can use the Ton of Vengeance with Transwheel, then use the Restoration right after... And then use Thorn of Vengeance once again. Okay, he will be able to save this now, for now. Aragorn is in the business though, and Aragorn should not be underestimated, guys, with the Blade Master. He's very, very tanky and dealing a lot of damage. Look how much damage he's dealing to Elrond. Eagle is flying by as well. Gandalf is coming in clutch. A Thorn of Vengeance, we're gonna keep an eye on this guy. He needs to be careful. Nice one here with the... Uh, whirlwind. Easter light is being used from Gandalf against Transwheel. He'll... He's dead. Okay, he's dead. He's already gone. Unfortunately, without being able... <laughs> oh, Lightning Sword is being used now to catch Elrond. Elrond is receiving a lot of damage. Atelas, but it is not gonna be enough. However, Aragorn is dying right after against Haldir, who's level 10 as well. Gandalf was just killing the heroes like they are nothing. You know, they are level 10 heroes. But Gandalf is the man. Or the wizard in this case. Eagle is doing a great job, but you could see yourself, right? I mean, the whirlwind was literally dealing zero damage to the units. I mean, it's damaging them a little bit, but not a big deal. It's much more about them disabling, you know? It's like a permanent felwind, which is gonna deal slightly, slight damage, but uh, it's not gonna... It's not gonna burst down the enemy units like that. Aldir was able to survive, by the way. Water of Power is still on cooldown, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's still on cooldown. Multiple Malone trees next to each other, just to get more command points, I'm assuming. Now we have to Rohirrim summon from the Man of the West player Mustafa. Let's see how much, how much damage he will be able to deal. Legolas is level 10, remember, Erovole is available, actually. But he has to now revive. Oh, Erovole is being used. Shield Bubble is available for, the, for, the, for Gandalf, so he, sh he should be fine. The level 3 Malone 3 is going to be protected, but the one on the backside is going to be taken... Actually, it's surprisingly tanky and Arrow Volley is going to be used to defend. Nice one here from the Elven player. He should be able to keep this one alive. Eagle's ally, Eagle ally is going to be summoned as well from the Elven player to deal with the Gunsalf. But we're going to now see another Ward of Power animation very, very soon, guys. He's going ham for that. I'm assuming he's going to... Ooh, the animation! He's going to cancel it for the memes. 
I mean, he's fine. He's very tanky. He's extremely tanky, guys. Look, three eagles are shooting him as well as Legolas and Heidi, level, level 10. Yes, heal. Bubble is on cooldown, so he has to be careful now. Some archers. He needs to use something. Like, if you know you can so Or the Sun Flare. Commitment with everything against Gunzelf. He finally was able to kill him with three eagles, five heroes, 25,000 abilities from the spell work. He was able to do that. Archer range is going down. And the man of the best player has nothing left anymore, right? He has nothing left anymore. And I think that's all about it now. Because Flood is going to be available very soon. In the next five seconds. And he should be able... Uh, to finish off now the man of the best player who has everything on cooldown by the way army of the dead is on cooldown as well as the donut allies orbit allies from bombardier and also earthquake yes now some upgraded uh oh, he needs to be careful now blade of purity is available so it's not a big deal he can always use it and get in safety blood maybe let's see if he's gonna use it or not you shall see i mean if you use it like this I don't even I don't even think that he needs to use it because the game is literally over now already, right? Cloud break is gonna be used to stun the enemy. Oh, the flat is coming in clutch. Yeah, doesn't deal too much damage to the fortress, though. No? Like there are some abilities they are not very efficient against against buildings, like against the fortress especially. The rebuild is not available for the Man of the West faction, and Mustafa will be defeated. What a fiesta game! Gandalf was the one-man army, definitely. Very, very hard to be taken down. Mustafa was playing very, very careful with Gandalf pretty much all the time. I think he could have done much more than he already did. Uh, GG well played, guys. It was a Fiesta game, not a game which was serious, obviously. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. i see you next time. Take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.